Hello, and welcome to another Wayland Library 3D printing video. In this video, I'll be going over designing your own signage or signs. These are largely text-based signs, and the technique involved with making them is going to be very similar to the coasters and magnets video if you've seen other videos from this channel. And here are a couple of examples where I engrave the text onto basically just a flat rectangle to make like a plaque or placard to act as a sign. And the dual colors are not from a dual extruder 3D printer. The Weatherland Library does not have one of those. Rather, it's just a simple filament swap partway through the print. And the individual signs or plaques are about 10 inches across, if you are curious. And example number two, where we 3D printed each letter individually, and then kind of affixed it onto a wall. And each letter is about six inches tall, I believe, maybe five and a half, um, but in that ballpark. How did I make these? Well, let's dive right into it. As I mentioned earlier, it's basically the same method that we use to make the coasters and magnets. So we need to get an image, convert that image to an SVG, and then we can import that into Tinkercad and play around with it if we need to. And the easiest way to get a image that is essentially nothing but text is to screen cap something from you know, Microsoft Word or Google Docs or something similar. So I have Microsoft Word open, I've gone ahead and I've picked a font. The next thing we want to do, regardless of what program you're using, is really jack up the font as much as you can. And I'll type something in quick. And next I'm going to use the Windows snipping tool to kind of get my screenshot of this text. Um, I have it on my taskbar, but assuming you're on a Windows machine, you should be able to just hit the Windows key, start typing snip or snipping, and it should come right up. Uh, it's kind of a default application with Windows. Uh, anyhow, a quick note on the snipping tool. I've noticed Windows 11 in particular really wants you to use the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key, Shift plus S. On pretty much any other system, you should be able to just hit New, and it gives you this little box, and you highlight your text, and it'll automatically save the image. Um, as you can see, it kind of just crashes out here on Windows 11. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use that shortcut now. But first, make sure to highlight your text. I found the gray background across it really helps uh, Inkscape carve out the letters. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the tool. I'm going to highlight my text. And there we go. Uh, and you should be able to kind of just like take a screen cap of your whole screen and like crop out the text if you want to do it that way. Um, all you really need to do is get like an image of just the text with the gray background. Um, I just really like the snipping tool. Uh, so anyway, we've got our image. I'm going to move on over to Inkscape. And let's open it up. Mine automatically saved to a folder in pictures called Screenshots. We can zoom out a little bit here to make it more manageable. I'm going to hold down the control and turn back on the scroll wheel. All right, so if you've seen the Coasters and Magnets video, this will be familiar. If not, I'm going to select the image I just took in. I'm going to go to the Path tab. I'm going to select Trace Bitmap. And just be sure to hit update to get your image to show up in the preview screen. This might also vary depending on your Inkscape version and operating system. 
I think on Windows 10 it comes out on like a big side tab here. Uh, but everything is called the same, the numbers are all the same. And pretty much all we need to do is go with the default right off the bat, which is brightness cutoff, the settings should give us a pretty accurate SVG. So go ahead and click OK, and then we can X out of it. And we can go ahead and hold down left click on the image, and you'll either you know, drag out the cutout that's going to be our SVG or the base image. You can drag the cutout into the main area here. And as you can see, you know, there's a couple minor errors, um, but these are pretty minor, and you can't really expect uh, Inkscape to ever do this job perfectly. Um, just know that going in. But I think this is a good cutout. These errors are extremely minor, so I'm going to keep this. We can delete the base image, and we can go ahead and save it. So go ahead and click on Save As. Inkscape SVG is fine. And just go ahead and give it a name. Hit Enter to save it. And now we can move on over to Tinkercad, where we can import our newly saved SVG. Which I believe is in pictures, screenshots, there we go. And with this imported, if you've seen my other videos or are previously well acquainted with Tinkercad, it is probably pretty obvious how I made the signs in the opening pictures, uh, but just for the purposes of this video, I'll quickly go over how I did them. So the first one, which is kind of just like a plaque, is pretty much dragging out and resizing a box and then engraving the letters onto it. So uh, for the purpose of this video, and just to be quick, I'm going to eyeball this. You know, in the p picture, it had to be like exactly 10 inches wide. So I kind of measured that out here and then adjusted the text size accordingly. But we're trying to be trying to be quick and snappy, so I'm just going to eyeball this and bring this down to 4 3 millimeters. You know, I'm pretty sure the signs I made in the picture were about 3 to 5 in Z height. And then you can resize the text a little bit if needed. And from here on, we just need to turn this into a hole and then engrave the text into our, you know, plaque or rectangle resized box, what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and click the hole button. And the easiest thing to do from here with this at the base level, currently it's, you know, punching clean through our plaque, which we don't want. So I'm going to, after changing it to hole, so make sure the text is selected. I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard. If you're on Mac, this would be the Apple or command key. And with that down, I'm going to tap the up arrow. I'm going to tap it twice. So the second thing we don't want to do here is have it resting directly on top because then we're not engraving anything. And if you're curious about, you know, how many taps, you can just pay attention to the snap grid here. So right now this is set at one millimeter. So every tap of the up arrow we're bringing it up one millimeter. So obviously we start at zero. This is three millimeters in Z height. If you tap the up arrow three times, we're floating and not engraving. So just tap it once or twice and then go ahead and group it. You can either do the selection box or you can shift click. I just did the selection box there. So I'll select both of them, group, engrave my text onto the or placard, and that is more or less how I made the uh, multicolored sign in the picture in the beginning. And as for the other sign that was the you know individually printed letters, uh, there's a couple different ways to go about this. I'm just going to go ahead and 
back step a ways here to get back to the original text. And yeah, so method number one, which is probably the most straightforward, is to just you know type out your sign, do an SVG cutout, and then just duplicate your imported object, and then just use holes to carve out the individual letters or two, depending on how big they are. And then just, you know, print them one by one. By one. So you can see I carved out the T. And you would do the same thing for the, the E and S. It was just differently placed whole objects. And that would carve out the E. And the second method, which is the one I would actually recommend since I'm guessing the signs you are looking to make are probably going to be longer than three or four letters um, is to SVG cut out each individual letter in the you know original word processor of your choice. So I would go back into Microsoft Word or Google Docs and since you're going one letter at a time, you can really maximize the font size. You know, if it lets you type in your own size, I would go, you know, anywhere from like 80 to like 100 or maybe even 110. Uh, but anyway, just type T, you know, continuing with the example of just test. And then snip, screen cap, and crop, whatever your preferred method. Save it as an SVG. And then import into Tinkercad and print, and then just to repeat the same thing for E, S, and so on and so forth, whatever your word may be. And that is basically how I made the signs. You might be thinking and looking through Word or Google Docs and you know wondering how you can get extra fonts or you know, just looking for something a little more interesting. Maybe you found something online. How do I get a custom font into, say, Microsoft Word? As I did here with this font called Game of Squids. I don't know why it's called Game of Squids. I just thought the font looked neat. Maybe it's got something to do with Squid Game. Anyway, how did I get this in here? Well, first I just downloaded a free font from the internet. Um, I'm not going to name specific sites because they are everywhere. You know, if you do a quick Google search, you'll get like dozens of sites and hundreds of free fonts. Um, so I'll skip to the part where you found one you liked, you downloaded it, and it is probably sitting in your downloads folder. So you would navigate here. In all likelihood, it is a zip file and you should be able to just double click into it and you want the true type font file. I think open type might work as well, but that might be uh, you know, more for open office, the open source word processes. Uh, but either way, all we need to do is right click, open, install, and then it will show up in Word or open office. Um, I believe the this open piece is particular to Windows 11. I have not tested this on 10, um, but I think in Windows 10 or earlier versions of Windows, like literally all you need to do is right click and there will be a, a button for install. Um, so if you don't see install, just go to open and it should bring you to this window. And if you have the install from just right clicking, just click install and it will do the same thing. And what about Google Docs? Well, unfortunately, from what I can gather, there is currently no way to import a downloaded font into Google Docs. What you can do is just click more fonts and you will get a list pretty big list of expanded fonts and you can just you know click ones that you think might look cool click OK and then it'll show up in Google Docs as normal you know font select drop down. And that's gonna do it for this video on you know, making signs in your own signage. 
Um, stay safe and be well.